Hello everybody and welcome to a Thursday afternoon edition of Business Spotlight interview. First time ever I've got three business owners in a room so it could be a bit chaotic but I'm sure it's going to be absolutely fun but they're fr there's Dave, Aaron and Molly or Molly, Dave and Aaron from uh, Still and Nimble. Aaron tell us all about your business. Oh, okay. Um, so Still and Nimble is a digital marketing agency. Um, we do websites, branding, and uh, digital marketing. Um, we're kind of rooted in sustainability, pretty much. So we work with um, agencies to help build reputation, to gain trust, and to help them stand out online. But we do it in sustainable methods. So we work with low carbon websites and always kinking kind of planet first optimization first and trying to balance the needs of the business with the needs of sustainability really um we set up about three years ago but the history of still and nimble goes back almost a decade uh, we worked together at an agency and then since then we freelanced and worked in different businesses and about three years ago we set up still and nimble as a kind of passing conversation about fulfillment and sustainability in a business um we were kind of found that fulfillment for us came from a better work-life balance and being able to work with businesses to help them grow not within necessarily the thoughts of profit but within the thoughts of um purpose really um and that's where we've been at now for for three years in various different sectors that's that's really interesting so so just going to going to you molly i mean sort of sustainability is that driven by all the stuff which is actually going on on the planet um is, is is that the purpose and is that your your kind of like vision and mission um so i think you could tackle it in a few different ways one um that perhaps dave and Aaron are better to speak about is the services we provide those being um eco-friendly in themselves so uh, the way websites run using less, I don't know if power is the correct word, correct me there, Dave, um, using less energy to run websites, making sure they work more efficiently. Um, and then looking at uh, companies that already have sustainability as a mission themselves and how we can better um, portray that mes message, um, intertwine that with their reputation building online. Um, to make sure that companies that have that as a, a goal themselves can also work with companies that align with that. Well, that's, that's really interesting. So just passing on to you, Dave, I mean, sort of just thinking about that, how do you make websites which are more sustainable? So yes, it's all about making sure that they're, well, you can tackle it from various different standpoints, but making sure that you're, you're only transmitting the data that you need to transmit. So really thinking it right from the design stage of like what is actually essential for the website. So it's asking questions like, do we need to have video? Do we definitely don't, definitely don't want to have auto taking video? Do we need images? Are they actually providing value? Um, and it lets us like look at like the, you know, the core essence of what's needed. Uh, and it kind of plays into other things as well, because if you make a, a low carbon sustainable website you're also making it faster you're making it more inclusive so you're then including people you know who if you are you live in a rural area you've got a poor internet connection you often exclude from many parts of the internet because of the way that websites have become over the over the past few years of being more and more tracking scripts and over excessive amounts of um widgets <laughs> That are built into them. Um, and then you can take it from another angle of, of um, say, like, um, um, of, uh, yeah, if you don't have a broadband connection uh, and you're only on a mobile device, the latencies that happen on a mobile device, um, again, they'd be in a um, very different experience than if you're on a broadband connection. Okay, brilliant. Th th thanks for that share. That that's really interesting because I think because websites are everywhere and everybody kind of has websites or whatever, and nobody's really thought about this. So, so essentially, what we're actually saying here is 
in a, in a nutshell, correct me if I'm wrong, Aaron, um, that you can actually pare down and actually put out what you need to put out rather than all the other bits and bobs. Yeah, basically. I mean, uh, from my standpoint, I think it's shared across the business. Sustainability is not just plan it as such. It's also about people within it and the way the impact that we have. And as a, an agency that essentially works in communication across websites and digital marketing, it's our job to communicate the right messages. Um, and I think a lot of people are excluded online in terms of accessibility, in terms of inclusivity, in terms of what you can access both technologically, but also um, if, you, if you're if struggling with certain disabilities, getting to access the right information can be difficult um, and creating websites more sustainably, creating digital marketing more sustainably opens you up to a, a bigger audience. So from a business's perspective, sustainability can sometimes be an afterthought, whereas actually approaching it in that that right way from the beginning and saying, if we build this sustainability, we reach a larger audience and we make less of an impact. The impact that we're making is actually on speaking to a wider audience and, and showing what we can do for them. Brilliant. That's, that, that's really interesting. So, so moving on onto your journeys and, and, and things like that, Molly, I mean, sort of, you've obviously been in this particular sector for about 10 years. Did you always want to have your own business? Um, I mean, speaking personally, I've always had a drive to do something on my own. So even we were all working um, within an agency and eventually I just felt that need uh, individually to go and pursue something freelance. And it just so happened that each of us also did that same thing at different points, um, not in relation to each other. Um, so then I guess the working freelance gives you that that taste of, oh, you can kind of do something different and I can do it on my own terms and start to shape the way I work outside of the traditional um, businesses. But then us coming together was trying to solve some of the areas where being self-employed, but just being an individual freelancer, they, you kind of lacks, it lacks the the teammates, it lacks yeah. um, maybe a bigger vision for where something can go just as an individual. Um, so yeah, there was always that idea of working individually, but not necessarily coming together as a group until I think we'd all been in it doing the freelance thing. Well, that, that's, that's really interesting. So you're all different people. How do you actually manage the different dynamics in, in the business? So Dave, if, if you'd like to start there. So, so I'm, I'm based in Nottingham, but the other, the other two, um, Molly and her, are actually um, different ends of the country. Okay? So, um, so we're kind of a fully remote um, team. Um, we've all, we also made a conscious effort, effort to be what we call asynchronous, asynchronous team. So we invested heavily in, in our kind of workflows and standard operating procedures that we kind of follow that allows us to get the most out of our, our working day, both in terms of work-life balance with families and stuff, but also in terms of our output. So we have a big focus on working in um, these like work blocks. I know personally, I work in these 90-minute work blocks where we um, you know, turn off all distractions. And so we've crafted the way that we can kind of communicate with each other so that we kind of respect each other's kind of Work box. I mean, myself, I'm a developer, and in order to get the best out of me, my work, I, I need to have lots of focused time that I can, I can ignore everything else. So we've put a lot of effort into how we communicate um, mindfully with each other so as to basically maximize the work. That, that's, that's really interesting. And Aaron, these work blocks and things like that, I mean, so, so let, let me just step back a minute. So, Dave, you're a developer. Aaron, your role is I'm a I'm a I'm the designer. Designer and Molly Marketing. Right, okay. So that is a different dynamic, isn't it? So you're all kind yeah. of uh, a marketeer is different to a designer, a designer is different to a developer. So you, you you've actually developed these internal systems, uh, yes, Aaron? Yeah, I think what the services themselves cross over. 
the problem is that they all are individual services and you can offer them in different ways. And the one we set up still in Nimble, the intention was for us to be asynchronous and to have a work-life balance that allowed us to still run a business profitably, but around the times we wanted to work, hence the, the work block system. Um, but it's been an interesting challenge and a development over the years to how do you offer shared services when you're not always together and how do you maintain client relationships, positive client relationships when you're not necessarily working a standard nine to five. Um, but it's been, it's been a, a nice to kind of see it come together, I think. So Molly, going from there, so what's your biggest learnings uh, in, in business and life once you've actually done that? Um, I think it's been necessary that we've uh, started with um, each of us sharing exactly what we need out of it. So what we need out of the business, what we need out of our approach to work, what we need out of each other. Um, and then letting that unfold and then kind of reassessing that. Um, so I think the way that we've been working has worked well. Um, but you then learn along the way that actually maybe we've gone a bit too, um, <clears throat> we've thought too much about everything that we can offer, given that we've got these three different skill sets um, and that we like working together. And we've said that I can offer this and I can do this, that we've really gone kind of above and beyond in what that offering could look like. Um, and then over the time, we've then stepped back and thought, actually, there's a much neater way of simplifying this that just uh, really serves the clients more rather than us thinking of the most that we could possibly do in all these different ways of offering our services. So I think it's not just saying this is how we like to work and this is exactly what my skill set is, but it's how do we simplify that both as individuals and the way we're working together, but also the service we're offering um, clients. That's really interesting. So basically expanding and then coming back and focusing exactly what you want to do and what you can, well, what not you want to do, what you can actually offer the clients in the best particular way. Yeah. Okay, that's absolutely fantastic. So guys, what does, what does the future look like and uh, what do you see as the challenges moving forwards, Aaron? Uh well, the future for us is we want to continue as we are, but we're trying to work with more businesses that are kind of aligned to our ethos, really. Um, we have background and enjoy working with the legal, financial and charity sector. So the idea would be to work with more of those to make a bit more of a name for ourselves in that, in that sector. Um, and to really just feel like we're having a positive impact on the people that we work with and the work that we're doing. I think the advantage to be in a small agency is that we have the space to care about it we're not just doing it for profit or to to kind of uh, make up the overheads um and i'd like to just do more of it <laughs> Fair enough. i think that's a well, well wish to a lot of businesses so uh, let's, uh, a little bit more please uh fantastic and final question to you dave what is the best advice you'd give to an 18 year old you I'm going to, yeah, don't be afraid to just, just try stuff. And don't, don't worry about what other people think or people that you think you're needing to please in life. Don't worry about that. Just, it's cheesy, just follow your heart kind of thing. <laughs> I, I honestly, no, I'm, it, it wasn't until a certain like very big life events happened to me that I kind of snapped out of where I was and that's what, kind of set me on this path and it's been like, like, like night and day in terms of how much how much happier I feel about myself kind of being on this journey even though it's quite it can be quite uh, up and down a lot of the time and you have to roll with the punches but um, yeah I wouldn't change it for a second so. brilliant what a great share great ladies guys and thanks so much for your time thank you Tim. thank you